Okay, I'll just let you have a look at the webmaster, I think it is. Yeah, we're just going to let you have a look at the webmaster light, which is actually a HTML coding program. Right button, right arrow button. We have had a look at a few HTML editors for the past day. And actually, in this previous video, when I've just done, we had a look at an HTML editor. It doesn't have a name to it. And yesterday, I had a look at Anwhite HTML. And that was a little bit of a disaster, to be honest with you. And you can actually find that video. And you can also find the video of the HTML editor that I've just looked at. And so far, the HTML editor well, the one I've just had a look at seemed a bit better than the Anwhite HTML, and that was by far off. Button, text, button, open, D discount code, big data JSON comparison, link. So, first of all, what we're noticing here you've is file. you've actually got the save, text box available to you, button, which is actually Deltax pretty good, to be honest. JSON, big discount. Open. And I really do like the fact that the edit Press box is presented for... to you. Text I've actually already written some code because I just had a look at the previous HTML, uh, the editor. Um, HTML, by the way, is a is basically a web page, so it's not like your everyday document where you just you know write your document. And save it as a HTML file. These HTML files are actually for browsers and they involve code which the browser can understand. So if you want to learn to code your HTML documents, then you can go to W3 Schools where they take you for a HTML lesson. And in addition, you can actually learn to code languages such as CSS and JavaScript which will enable you to make your own full-fledged full-blown website with various layouts and that and who knows you can probably start your own web development business like I plan to do so right that was arrow. that so button. here you have your white arrow button. Button. and button. a few other buttons and you've also got your various things. Button, the class. class and the ID. The class, well, I'm not too sure on the class and that, but the ID is for identifying things and particularly, well, not necessarily file. I think you can use the ID tag to identify files. But you can also use it to identify functions and, and that, that. But that's mainly for the JavaScript. But again, I haven't really done HTML or CSS or JavaScript for that matter of fact in a long time. So I'm not really sure on what some of these things mean. You do have the ampersand uh, symbol available to you. And that's actually pretty handy because if you're using your tablet to code and you're using the tablet's touchscreen keyboard, then obviously you don't really have the symbols available to you unless you click on the symbols icon. But then that's a little bit of a faff. So if you're using a tablet, what I would recommend personally is a Bluetooth keyboard. And you can actually get Bluetooth keyboards which are smaller and that can fit the same size as your tablet so you don't really have to carry a long keyboard thing with your tablet anyway let's get on with it you do have some unlabeled buttons however which are a little bit of a pain for screen reader users so it would be nice if the buttons were labeled and you do actually have quite a few unlabeled buttons here so I've actually just clicked on one and actually, before I continue, you do have these links here. Code BF Dev 21. 
discount code vf discount code vf dv21 big data json comparison link and i think that's mainly advertisements but it is a little bit annoying and confusing why that's there so I would rather that be somewhere else or not in the app altogether. What we're going to do is we're going to test this screen reader and how well it communicates with the... Now we're going to test the edit box rather and how well that communicates with the screen reader. And sometimes when you're using some edit boxes, the screen reader doesn't really tell you where you are when you use the arrow keys or the backspace key. And that is because the edit box didn't really get on well with the screen reader. But I do believe that Chromevox is getting better on Chromebooks and therefore can you know support more edit boxes. But there we go. Allow. That is quite annoying because, as you saw, you had that permission request pop up, and again, you usually get these at the beginning of you know when you start to use the app. So I wasn't really expecting to get the permission request while you know I am actually using the app, and I wasn't really aware of that coming up anyway. So it would be nice if you got permission requests out of the way and done with before you actually you know use the app to your heart's content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, well, a little bit of gibberish. Well, not gibberish, but gibberish for HTML coders. I uh, guess a small sentence. So although the screen reader isn't talking to me while I'm typing, that isn't really a worry as such because I have actually got that feature off. I did find that feature distracting, but hopefully, you know, it will keep up with screen reader users as they type. One thing I have noticed, however, is that when I'm using the arrow keys, I know what letter that I'm focusing on, and that is... This is a P S H R S R S S C T S new. It is good S T S new last C S. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so when you're using the arrow keys, at least you know what letter you're focusing on. So that is really good. Also, if you have to correct your mistakes, and actually, as you probably saw, I had to correct a mistake just it now, and that was PMS. actually pretty easy to do okay. and I've been on a programming languages for Chrome in the past where this is a test. <laughs> well it has been an experience let's say so I'm actually going to copy and paste some code that I have already done and if you want to know more about this code you can click on well you can visit the Cancel. file name html head Head title, test title, body P. This is a test parrot. HTML head. Can save button. Webmaster life. App. Greater than, less than. Great end of text. Selected. XP. Hope this. Well, I went to do the paste command, but it took me to the save box area where he wanted me to give it a file name. And again, I wasn't really expecting that again, but whether I accidentally did the control S command or whether it actually meant to do that. Button. HTML head. Button. HTML. HTML head. Head title. Test title. Body P. It's called it button. HTML head. New open park. Save. Save as preferences. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the preferences Edit. section in the app. And see this what text, and editor, see what we have. Settings, settings, text, text, font size, font so you've size. got your font size options here, which is quite nice. Text encoding, select text and you've encoding. got your text encoding. Use 
You've got UTF-8 is your default. And actually, you've got quite a few options. I think you've got 16 options here. So at least you can, you know, have a very good... Eastern Europe, Central, Western, Cyrillic, Western Europe, Win. Western Europe. Japanese, 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 Korean, Korean. ISO 2022. I think these. Oh, we've got Korea Default. ISO 2022. So we're going to click it on the UTF 8 because that is what a lot of text editors use. Text. But again, I'm not too sure what the encoding thing uh -huh. is all about. On size, text encoding tick box, rate application, night mode, light text on dark background. So it's got text the night mode on automatically, text. which is. Pretty nice, I guess, because if you do HTML coding, let's say just before you go to bed for your assignment, for example, the night mode can actually filter out the blue light, which can keep you up in the night because the blue light from the screen can help hinder the production of melatonin, which is a sleep hormone. However, if you want to eliminate the blue light altogether, I would suggest getting a screen protector for your device so that way you can you know get a good night's sleep that way because sometimes the night mode filters don't always help because I think they actually put like a tint so it doesn't really show the blue light but I think because the screen is LCD it naturally emits blue light by nature and it's a blue light that you can't really see so but anyway that is that but I thought I will I'll tell you about it rate application. you've got rate application let's click on the ever oh Let's Auto click on the editor. File on preview, always save file before preview. Always this save time. file before preview. So that was probably, you know, when I clicked on the control paste command, you know, when I did the paste command and it pasted my code, that was probably why it came up with that funny Auto save box. So that's probably a useful thing to have in case. Auto save file on preview or editor. Yeah, that's pretty useful for her to have. Full screen mode. Again, although this Chromebook is a touch screen, I don't really. Um, you know, I don't really want to see what the app layout is like. But you've got quite a few settings here that you can use and it's actually quite a nice touch to have you've got wrap long lines which is a pretty useful thing to have line numbers enable line numbering and line numbers enable line numbering and again that is pretty useful because you know sort of which line or something like that and some programming languages do have that, particularly when you're on the command line of the programming language. The command line is for when you want to code, let's say, a program just to practice your skills in, in situ. Because when you code on the command line, if you do get a line wrong, then... It will actually tell you that the syntax, which is the line, is not recognized. However, the programming languages do have an editor to them. But if you get any lines wrong in the editor, you won't really know about it until you actually go and try the program and it crashes on you. Code completion <laughs> so code completion. that is that. You've got code completion here, which is a pretty, again, useful feature and can be pretty helpful. System word completion, experimental, and it tells you about it here. jQuery code completion enable jQuery code completion. jQuery code completion. Auto indent, auto indent. Auto indent. 
Graphic box, nine numbers. So these are really helpful when options that can really prove useful, okay. particularly when you're on your tablet or on your phone and you haven't got a Bluetooth keyboard to hand. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the Webmaster Lite. It has got quite a few features to it, which can be really helpful to, you know, people. And it is actually a very simple app, so it's not really like the Anwriter HTML editor I viewed, or the HTML editor, which doesn't have a name. And again, the HTML editor in particular, the nameless one, shall I say, was actually quite complex compared to the one that we've just seen, and was actually quite confusing and a little bit chaotic. However, this one, the only thing that is a little bit confusing and chaotic is the links, the so-called advertisements. So I'd rather they not be there. And I know they have things like the JSON and that, but again, I personally thought at the beginning that it was something to do with the app letter and not thinking that it was some kind of advertisement because usually when you see a advertisement, you usually see things like file system or custom ads relating to your taste. <laughs> and I once saw a diesel particulate filter on a fire manager once, and that was the ad. But anyway, obviously that's unrelated. But no, I mean, the links are a little bit sort of irrelevant and really shouldn't be there. However, I like the edit box functions and I do like the functions that you get on this app near the edit box section, such as the ampersand, which is useful for touchscreen keyboards. The settings are a pretty handy, you know, quirk to have in the fact that you've got your auto text completion and your text encoding. And overall, I think I'd recommend this app to anyone, including screen reader users. However, the app is a little bit on the simple side. So I would probably expect a little bit of complexity from this. But nevertheless, it is still a recommendation for myself. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos to come and HTML editors to review and I will see you soon.